God, it's gonna be a great Wednesday. If he said it, we believe. How many of y'all agree with that? If he said it, come on, somebody. If he said it, I believe. I don't care what it is. Whatever he said, I believe. Because there's some things that God just said about you. There's some things that God just said about me. And the song says, I am who he says I am. Come on, somebody. Listen to the words. I am who he says I am. Not what you see right now. Not what I was. I am who he says I am. So when he said you was a multi-millionaire, you are what he says you are. When he said you are a woman of God, you are what he said you are. It's not what the situation looks like. Yes, God. Uh, I feel the spirit. We got two more mics. Can I borrow them if y'all have them? Keep playing that. Keep playing that. Listen, guys. I, I'm going to move with the camera right here. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is a season where you can't believe circumstances. You can't believe situations. You can't believe what society is saying about you. Hear me. This is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You are what I said you was at the end of 19. You are what I called you at the end of 18. You are what I said you was when you were born. You are what I said you were when I made your mama. Come on, somebody. Listen to God. He said, and you are. Think about what God said to you. The, the, look, if you're at home, if you're if you, if you sitting here, close your eyes. Think about what God promised you. Think about what the Spirit of the Lord said to you in your prayer time. The promises of God said that you were blessed coming in and blessed going out. Amen. He said that the words you speak shall be life. That when you sing, it's going to break yokes. Think about what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and stand there. Stand there, right there in that thing. Because see, when he said it, it's done. That's it. If he said he can do it. No, 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 no. No ifs in it. If he said it, then it is. He says, I am. I am what he says I am. Come on, somebody. Come on. I am. I am what he says I am. I am. Many in this country. 
congregation that has lost recently didn't stop. See, because God is looking for a remnant. Ah, He's looking for people that through circumstances, through situations, it don't stop the show. It don't stop the progress. Why? Because if in your mind you know that God is bigger than anything you'll ever face, any situation you'll ever come, guess what? Press on. Keep going. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We are at that moment. I remember about four years ago, Pastor had this thing where it was it was it was practice, it was it was it was this and this, and then it was game time. Guys, we we so past we're so past game time, it's ridiculous. If game time was uh 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 uh, uh if I could make it to something relatable, anybody follow basketball? Yes, okay, good. Y'all know we in this little hiatus. Mid-season, right? Stops. Okay? Now you have a whole bunch of teams trying to figure out what is going to happen now. Okay? But it's not about who was the best when it stopped. It's about who pressed it through the situation. The team that stayed ready through the pandemic is the one that's going to come out the champion. Understand what I'm saying? It's not the one who has the most superstars that's going to break out of this thing. Understand? It's the ones who understand preparation, who, who understands pressing through, although the situation is not what, it's, what I'm used to. Understand this. It's the pressing. It's the pushing through. Okay, let's go here. The scripture. James, James chapter 1 verse 12. The Lord gave me this. He said, stand the test. Stand the test. And I said, well, Lord, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? First of all, I want to give honor to God because God is amazing. I love God. I honor God. I reverence God. But I'm going to tell you something, though. My pastors, if you understand how much you're being attacked, then think about how much the devil attacks our pastors. Think about the scrutiny. Think about the things he tries to bring. And yet and still, they think to pray for us in shepherd, in intercede. The least we can do is honor them. Amen. The least we can do is respect and reverence. That's, that's the bare minimum. Because if, if, if you only understood the, the immense pressure, I, I'm not sure if they will ever say it. I, I'm not sure if they ever get up here and tell you the fullness of leading. Because it's greatness in the pews. I know y'all can look around it and it is greatness at Rima Church as, as it is at every other church. But I only know my church. You know, I know the anointing that sits in, <clears throat> in the chairs here. Amen. But imagine having to lead and shepherd and help God cultivate and shape that greatness. So when pastor gets up here and say, the attack that hits my house. Because if he can get me, then he can possibly stop you. I honor them, man. And, and, and I choose to give them the roses while they still here. You know, I, I love I love my pastors, and I'm and, and you know I can talk all night about them, but I mean truly have changed my life. I mean, I was talking with my older brother uh, today, yesterday, the day before that, talking about old dumb stuff we used to do. Can I say that? Is that okay? Is that politically correct? Old stupid dumb stuff we used to do. Just downright, just idiotic some hell. Just, I mean, I don't even know what I was thinking, but. God covered in the midst of that. Amen. You understand? 
And, and it was, and it, it and now I know it's because of grandmama praying and daddy praying and 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 and, and a whole bunch, host of other people praying. But imagine after I get under the covering and I had to be taught something. And, and then he and then he has the faith in God enough to allow me to teach kids. You know what I mean? The faith in God enough to say, yeah, I know his daddy, and I knew him when he was a big head little boy, but the grown man now, he don't look quite the best. I understand, I remember details of the story all the time. I, used, I came into church, and uh, you know, I looked a little rough. I looked a little ragged around the edges because I still had some stuff going on. And, and that's, a, that's another testimony for another time. But I had some stuff going on during that time, you know. But I understood the integrity that was here. And I trusted that. Because, see, I didn't trust churches then. Can I be honest? I didn't, I didn't trust what was out there. But I knew the integrity of the other man and woman of God that was at our church. So I trusted that. And I got here. And I heard the word. And I applied the word. And my life changed. You understand? So I give honor to them for that. James chapter 1 verse 12. We're going to hit this thing. And, and I'm not even going to try to rush through it. Whenever God allows for, for me to finish it, I'll finish it. But we're going to go slow. Because um, that's what I was told to do. James chapter 1 verse 12. It says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life. So I stopped there and I said, Lord, you know, because when I, when I read scripture, I like to have understanding of the scripture that I'm reading. You know what I mean? I don't just like to read it and it sounds good in my head and to my hearing. You understand? I want to really know what, what did you mean by that? So the crown of life, one thing the Lord said to me is that doesn't mean salvation. Okay. Because the, 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 uh, the heaven, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, that is eternal life. You have just received that. But the crown of life is something entirely different. And um, I did a little bit of research. And that word crown, is they used the Greek word in the Bible. When they translated it, it was a Greek word. And it was a Greek word, stephanos, which is a laurel crown or a wreath. You know, every Greek, in, the, in the Greek times, they wear them togas. And, and, you know, if you was of royalty or if you earned something, you could wear like this little golden wreath. You know, you had a little toga party. When I, when I was BC days, we had toga parties and put that little wreath on. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know. Anyway, anyway, but they had a little wreath. So it's like a little wreath, right? But um, specifically speaking, the word means reward. So it's like a reward. If you think about it in Olympic times, uh, uh, they uh, way, way, way back in the day, like in Greece, when you want something, they give you a look. One of them little laurel crowns and give you some little roses and maybe a couple of some of them little monies they had back then. But the Lord said this to me. He said, son, the crown of life is something entirely different because in my kingdom, you have to think about it. My thing is you learning through process. You learning through growing. You learning through your situation. So he, he, he explained it to me like this. When you stand the test, when you stand in the test, that crown of life that you receive is wisdom on how to navigate life's trials, tribulations, and persecution. Hear me. The crown is learning how to navigate life's trials, tribulations, and persecutions. Hear me. He says in the scripture, I'm going to read it to you here again. It says, blessed or happy or favored is the one who perseveres under trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord what? Promised to those who love him. He promised it to the ones who loved him. Why did he promise the, that to the ones who love him and not to the ones who believe? Yeah. Why did, why, why did he promise it to the ones that love him and not to the ones who confess that he was their Lord and Savior? Don't worry, I'll explain it to you. It, uh, it, Lord, you won't hit that. Yeah, let's do that. 
in the, in the word it says, in the word it says, those who love me. Let's go to John chapter 14. Let's do that. John chapter 14. John can do it better than I can. Okay. Now, I believe in scripture. I'm, and and, and we're going to follow that scripture. We're going to go to it that way. You can put it in your seat. And we can get this thing down. John chapter 14. Okay. And we're going to start in verse 15. We're going to start in verse 15. And we're going to go through verse 27. Okay. Let me get there. But this is the thing. We have to understand that it's a difference between believing in Jesus and believing in God and loving him. And this is what he said in verse 15. He says, if you love me, you'll do what? Thank you. Thank you, Austin. I appreciate that. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. There are many people that believe in Jesus Christ and that believe in God, but fail in the part of keeping the commandments. Okay, I'm right. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 16, it says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot what? Accept him because it is because they neither see him nor know him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the ones who love God. Because the ones who love God stand near enough to hear God. And they stay near enough not just to hear, but to obey God. And as we read in the scripture that if you keep the commands, that's proof enough to God that you love me. Right? Okay. Let's keep reading. Verse 18, it says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Verse 19 says, before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live in you and you in me. Verse 20, it says, on that day, you will realize that I am, my, I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and, okay, look at the scripture. Whoever has my commands and keeps them. Because there's a lot of people that have a Bible. There's a lot of people that have a Bible and put fruit bowls on them. There's a lot of people that have a, a big Bible with the, with the gold etching on it and the big pictures in it and all that stuff. But if you open it up, the spine cracks. A lot of people have Bibles that's in pristine condition. I, I mean, the pages ain't never been turned. Hear me. This is not to condemn you. It's to wake you up. Okay? It's to, it's to check yourself. Where do I sit? Do I just believe in him? Or do I really, really love God? Because if you love him, keep the commandments. Okay? What does it say? Let's keep going. Verse 21, it says, Whoever has my commands and keep them is the one who loved me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and do what? Show myself to them. Think about this. Jesus is saying, not only will I love them, not only will the father love them, but I'll go one more step and I'll show myself to them. Now you have to understand this. Jesus was the word manifested in what? Come on, somebody. So he, he was the word. So the way he's going to manifest himself is not float through a wall. Hear me. He's going to manifest himself through his word. It all circles back to this thing. Once you understand the word and you love God enough to do the word, then Jesus will manifest himself in your life through you. Imagine this. No sickness. No poverty. No powerless living. Understand this. But it's a constant meditation of what? The word. Uh, don't just meditate. Do it. Okay. James chapter 1. Let's go back there. Let's do this. Let's do this. James. I know James 1. But we're going to go there anyway. James chapter 1. See, see, this is what I'm talking about. When you flip it. 
You flip the Bible open. I mean, every now and then, if you use it enough, you might have to take it to the to repair and get it. Anyway, just never mind. Yeah, never mind. James chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse 19. It says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Because see, the word is not going to deceive you. See, the word is true and life. Okay? But don't, don't merely be just listeners of the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and afterwards forgets what he looks like. You understand me? So it's like a person who, who, who puts tons of money in a bank account to protect and keep and, 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 and keep anybody from taking or, or, or pulling from it and then forget where they put it. Now we know, we, we, we all know those aunties and mamas and, and, and uncles and, that they hid money in their house to keep you from getting it. Come on, y'all, come on, somebody testify with me. There's somebody that, 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 that they didn't put it in shoe boxes and they didn't put it in, they didn't put it in crayon boxes for, for old baby and, and the old cassette tapes that they knew you weren't gonna put that cassette in, right? And they got money everywhere, but they done forgot where it is. We can't be that way. Because guess what you're doing? You are now being a bad steward over the provisions that you have been given. Right? You are now not being a good steward of what God has placed in your possession. Okay? Let's go back to let's go back to uh, John chapter 14. John chapter 14, okay? I want to put that in your sight, okay? Now, this is the thing. We have to stand the test. And if we learn to stand the test, um, we'll learn to navigate different different uh, situations, whatever situations that you get put in. We're currently in a situation where, where we're battling social injustice. I mean, if you don't know this, you've been asleep too long. You understand? Okay? Now, we're, we're battling a situation but see, this is what some people are doing. And I see it on my timeline constantly. As believers, we're failing to do one key thing, and that's love, right? So people, people oftentimes think that when we mention love as believers, that means be passive. That is not what I mean. What I mean is be what you confess you are. Be Christ-like, right? Because if you have the spirit of God on the inside of you, then scripture says that the spirit searches the heart of man and God, right? So now, if you have that same spirit on the inside of you, then now God can speak to you and tell you how to do this thing in love. Hear me? In love. Because that's the key aspect. You ain't going to get nothing done. In, you, you, I'm, okay. Okay. Listen to me. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to say this. You can, you can protest, right? You can bring awareness. And it's like, it's like Dr. Williams said. Protest brings awareness. But at some time, at some point, we're going to have to sit down at a table. And we're going to have to figure out what it is we truly want to do to bring about that change. We can't go in there full of anger and animosity. Pastor and preached on it several times. Be angry and sin not. Do you know what human anger gets you? Nothing. Whatsoever. But if you be angry and sin not, then you can keep that human anger from blocking your hearing. And so now when you sit down at the table, you can allow for God to speak to you. And we can clear some stuff up. The way God intended and not the way we see fit. See, because God knows down the line. God knows when my daughter gets older, what we're going to be dealing with. See, right now we just have an understanding of the times where we're at. Now, okay? So we have to make sure that we iron things out for our children and our grandchildren. Amen. You hear me? So now listen. John chapter 14, and we're going to go down to verse 22 where we stop. It's talked about, and this is where Judas comes in. 
And I like when people like Jesus and ask questions because, you know, God gives a, a great understanding. When, anyway, um, verse 22 says, then Judas said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to my father who sent me, right? Amen. Now let's get down to verse 26. Now it says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things. And will remind you of everything I have said to you. Okay? So, like I said, in the example I gave you, at some point we're gonna have to sit down at these tables. Okay? Sometimes we're gonna have to, at some point we're gonna say have to sit down and figure out some things. You need God to remind you of that word. Okay? You, you need that in your prayer time say, and, and these are for the leaders. Because everybody ain't a leader in this thing. Everybody ain't gonna be able to get to that table. See, 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 all the millions and millions of people ain't going to be able to sit at that table. There are delegated people that God has strategically placed to sit at that table. Understand? That's why we have to figure out purpose. We have to figure out what it is that God is telling us to do. See, see, I know I ain't, I ain't supposed to be at that table. Hear me? This, this is something that God ain't told me. Now, other things that God's told me that I'm supposed to do, and I plan on doing. You understand? But it's, it's, it's not for me to decide how big my part is. Because now I'm getting into ego and self. Amen? Amen. Okay? But it's the times and the testings that come through this pandemic. The lack of money. Okay? All this social injustice and feeling enraged and angry. Learning how to navigate those things properly with the word will teach us how to properly sit at tables and figure out how to manage things in a way that doesn't self-destruct. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It'll teach us how to sit at a table and we can be fuming on the inside, but have the control, the self-control, the godly control enough to sit and be calm enough to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Y'all understand? Okay? So, let's go to John chapter 15. You should, you should be there already, okay? It's just right under 14, all right? So, John chapter 15, verse 5, okay? We're going to start there. We know this is a popular one, too, okay? Verse 5, it says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. You remain in me, and I in you, and you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and it withers. I don't know if you remember the, um, the time pastor, he, when he got up, he had this branch. One was withered and one was flourishing. It was green. It was, it was a thriving branch, okay? Th that analogy was perfect. Listen to me. At this point in time, getting away from that vine is something that is not going to be tolerated. That, that's something that God is trying to keep us from doing because at this point in time, the source is way more important than any resource because hearing God, receiving our instructions for us, for our household is the primary objective. You understand me? Understanding what God is saying to you personally. Now, the corporate word is great. What I'm saying to you now is great. What Dr. Wynn is saying to you, Pastor Rob, every, but at some point in time, you got to sit down, okay? Hear what I'm saying? You got to sit down and you got to hear what God is promising you because what God is promising you is what's going to be effective and productive in your life or else you're going to be looking around at other folk and seeing what other folk are doing and how successful other people are and you're going to try to mimic and copy that and that's not going to work for you. You're going to be frustrated and disappointed and we can't do that. It's in the standing in tough moments. Hear me, I'm, I'm, I'm done. In the, it's the standing in tough moments where you learn to navigate the trials, the tribulation, and the persecution in life. Okay? It's the standing, learning to hear God, 
when it's hard, when that flesh is rising, when your anger is burning, right? It's the learning to navigate those different things. That's where you gain your crown. Because see, that crown of life is like a, it's like a badge. Boy Scouts get badges all the time. It's like a badge. Because I guarantee you that lesson you learned in that hard time, you'll carry it throughout your life. And then not only will you carry it throughout your life, but you'll teach your children. And they'll learn how to navigate. Sure, they'll have to have their own personal experience to be able to implement it, but they'll be able to navigate it better instead of having to learn the hard way. You understand what I'm saying? These are some, these are some of the these are some of the perfect times to see who you are. No, 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 not, not, not what you feel you are, but to really see who you are on the inside. When times ain't perfect. Understand? This is, this is the best time for God to show up in your life and to show you who he really, really is. Because I'm going to tell you, going into it, I was a little nervous. Hear me? And can I be honest? A little nervous. Because my job depends on people being in the gym. Simple, right? But God said, not so. Because see, back in 2018, when I told you to leave that other job to go this job, and it was only $200 every two weeks, and you obeyed, it set you up for 2020 to be in position to still have. It's the following the plan. It's the going through when you don't understand. Amen? Y'all understand what I'm saying? I thank God for y'all. Now look, if you are at home, if you are in here, and you've been going, let me get, let me get lower. Oh, that, yeah, that's a good one. Leisha, you the best. Ain't Leisha the best? Y'all give Leisha a hand clap. clap, clap, clap. Now listen, if you're going through tough times, now this is serious. You got to, you got to get in your personal time. You don't got to look, let me say, for, for millennials, those of us who teach millennials, when you say get in your prayer closet, we going to find the closet. Hear me? Jasmine, am I right? I, when y'all were saying that at first, I was trying to find the closet. Hear me? All right? So listen, find your quiet place. You, we, we all out walking and riding quarantine. I call it quarantine riding anyway. <laughs> Turn that radio off. Pray. Park at a park. Daylight, not not time. Let's be smart about it. And hear God. Get your joy together. Get your peace right, okay? Because see, through that static of anger and frustration, it's going to be hard to hear. Okay? Don't let your emotions control you. Get in some peace, get in some joy, allow yourself to hear God. Now, if you're having problems with that, if you're having issues with that, then you might want to consider, have I backslid? You, you, you might want to consider, have I stepped back? If you, if you say, I hadn't necessarily stepped back, I never stepped up. One easy thing you can do. We can start now. It's easy. It just takes a confession. So if you're at home, if you're in here, and you be the backslidden, or you want to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, y'all close your eyes. Repeat this after me. Say, Father God, I know that you are the one and true God. Father, I, I fell short. I've come up short. I haven't done what you told me. And I repent. Well, Father, I know you are a redeemer. And I know you are a restorer. And I receive you in my heart. And I trust your promises. And from this day forward, I lean on you and not my own understanding. And I say congratulations. Welcome to the family. We're going to have us a family reunion coming soon. Uh, uh, what's, what is that? August? Is it, nah, I kid. I kid. I'm going to let Dr. Wynn do all that. But I, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Facebook, y'all have been great. 
But we're going to have our offering coming up. Uh, Minister Chantel is going to give you some information about our offerings and tithes. And if you have anything that you need prayer about, y'all don't, don't, don't hesitate to, to contact Remnant Church. We have our phone information. We have a Facebook. We have a YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to that YouTube. Man, the media team have been doing a great job, and I'm gonna get off this mic. You two have been doing a great, I mean, our media team has been doing a great job, and I really, y'all are really doing a great, great job. It looks great. I encourage you to check that out. It's, really, it's been some great teaching. Hey, Amen. Come on, Miss. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Well, it is offering time, offering time. For those who would like to give you a cash app, our cash app name is dollar sign remnant C. If you would like to give your tithes and offering via PayPal, it is remnantchurchlr at yahoo.com is the handle. And also, if you have access to the Give Like the app, you can find us up under Remnant Church Little Rock. And as you're getting your tithes and offerings together, I want to remind you on Tuesdays at noon, Time in the Word, Dr. Victor Wynn is on Little Rock's own Gospel Experience Rejoice, 105.5 FM and 103.3 FM and 1380 AM. But that's not all. Our very own Dr. Robin Wynn, God's Pastor Girl, comes forth on Facebook on new, at noon on Wednesdays for maintenance moments. God's Pastor Girl, so you don't want to miss that. So many different things keeping the word in your ear throughout the week. And also as a reminder, Sunday morning here at 9 a.m., we have Kingdom Finances started by myself and my beautiful wife, Martha, followed by Kingdom Marriages at 9.30 with the man of God that we just stepped from up here, Minister Caleb Brown, as well as his lovely wife, Sister Paige Brown. And that's not all. At 10 a.m., the man of God himself, Dr. Victor Wins, comes forth with a powerful word at 10 a.m. So... One more thing, if you want to send your tithes and offering in, you can send them to Little, uh, excuse me, Remnant Church, 11715 Rainwood Road, Suite B4. That is 11715 Rainwood Road, Suite B4, here in the great city of Little Rock, Arkansas. So if you have your tithes and offering, you can go ahead and uh, give those right now. Such exciting times. Time to really give with God and persevere through these types of times because we already have the victory. How many people know you already have victory? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Well, that wraps it up for another exciting night here at Remnant Church International. So, we're going to pray and we're going to release you up out of here. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for this word that you gave forth to our brother, Minister Caleb Brown. And Father, we will get with you and we will sync up with you and hear what you have to say as we endure and persevere through these times. Father, we know that we are victorious and we thank you for already giving us the victory. And as we go about our walks of life everywhere that we are, we will hold our heads high, knowing confidently that you have our back and that we are victorious. But Daddy, we love you and we bless your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in once again from all over the world. We don't take it lightly for you taking your time out to join us here at Remnant Church via these uh, social media platforms. So with that being said, God bless you. We love you.